be told. Let's go ahead and then start configuring this switch for the VLANs. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is go in here to switch one. We'll do a show IP interface brief. Let me pull this down. Now on switch one, in order to create a VLAN, the first thing we need to do is do a show VLAN brief. And this will show us the VLANs that we have. And as you can see by default, there's a VLAN one, you can't remove it. It's always there. All ports are assigned to VLAN one and they're up. In the switch, ports are automatically up unless you shut them down. But in the router, ports are automatically down unless you bring them up. Just a quick note. All right, so SW1 has no VLANs configured. What we need to do is create a VLAN. So what we're gonna do is go in here to config T. As you guys are following along, um, if you if you watch part one and part two, I always recommend having one note for notes and notepad plus plus for notes or your configs or whatever that you want to save. But in those previous videos, they which I'll link them up here, you can watch one of those and that goes over one note and tech, um, notepad plus plus. So you feel free to watch those. Now that we're in the global configuration mode, what we need to do is create a VLAN. And the first VLAN we're gonna create is gonna be VLAN 10. And all you do is type VLAN 10. We can name this VLAN. And let's name this one um, sales. Now we can exit or we can just write VLAN 20. And we can name this uh, production. And we can exit or we can just go VLAN again, but we'll exit and then type VLAN 30 and we'll call this management. Name management. And that's it. Now, if we do control Z, that takes us back to um, previous exec mode. And then we do a show VLAN brief. Boom. We have VLAN 10, we have VLAN 20, and we have VLAN 30 in their name. VLAN 10 is sales, VLAN 20 is production, and VLAN 30 is management. Notice that we do not have any um, ports assigned to these VLANs. So what we will have to do is assign some ports. All right, so while we're looking at this, this is um, the first number that you see in on the PC name is gonna be the VLAN that it's assigned to. I don't have the ports listed. And in the real network, sometimes you'll have bad documentation, but in this name, um, you have um, VLAN 10, PC1, and port 01. And it, this is how I name every device in the list is the last, the first digits is the VLAN number. The second digit is the PC name or just the unique PC name. And then the third digit is the port that it's assigned to. I did that because oftentimes when you have the ports display in Packet Tracer, there's too much going on. I tried to keep this lab as clean as possible. Good night, babe. You okay? I love you. All right, so now that we have that, if you did not know the P what port that your PC is assigned to, what you can do, and I'm gonna go over this now, is a show Mac address table. There's nothing going on, so what we need to do is go over to PC1 And do a ping to the 1.1.1 and what that does is causes PC1 to send traffic over to SW1 and now we should see something here shortly since we don't have an IP address assigned it's not going to ping so what we need to do is go in here and assign an IP address. 
So we'll go into configuration mode on the PC. Fast Ethernet. Then we'll tell this to have an IP address of 192.168.10. Let's say 10. Let's just give it that. And now since it has an IP address and we tell it to ping, if we go back into this PC1, and we tell it to ping again. Now when we go back into switch one, you'll see the MAC address of PC1. And as you can see, this MAC address is coming from FA or Fast Ethernet 01. So if we go back into PC01 and we do uh, IP config all, this is how you find the MAC address on the PC. It works on a physical, a real PC. So everything here is um, just like being in the real network. So we do an IP config all. You will see the physical address matches what's in the MAC address table. And that's how you will find what device is plugged into what port in your live network or when you're live in. Actually, let's do this. So, in here in the show VLAN brief, all ports are assigned to VLAN 1. We need to have the right ports assigned to each VLAN. So, we need um, port, we need ports in VLAN 10, 20, and 30. But we have a problem. The rest of the ports are all assigned to VLAN 1, and they're still up. For security reasons in your network, you should not have, you should not be using VLAN 1. And also, you should not have uh, your ports up if they're not in use. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole separate VLAN. We're going to call it the Black Hole VLAN or the Parking Lot VLAN. And we're going to move every port into that VLAN. And then we're going to take out the ones that we need. If we go in here to config T, and then we go VLAN, let's call it 99. And we're going to name this the parking lot. I don't think you can do, you can't do spaces. Or can you do spaces? No, you can't. You are not able to do spaces when naming your VLANs. So use like the underscore. So we'll name this the parking lot. VLAN and now if we do a show VLAN brief you can see we have a parking lot VLAN and what we need to do is move everything out of VLAN 1 into this parking lot VLAN so we'll go back config T then we'll go interface and we'll do a range of interfaces and we'll do F01 through 24 since this is a 24 port switch and we'll go switch port to make sure okay the reason why I did switch port is because on a layer 3 switch if you're ever using like a 4500 or 3750 that has IP services on what you need to make sure you do is hit switch port first to let it know to just be a switch port rather than um, if you hit no switch port that means it's going to act as a layer 3 interface so now the interface is just a switch port. Even though Packet Tracer does not accept it, I just want you to get used to that. So we're going to switch port. And now what we want to do is tell this port to be an access port. So we'll go switch port mode access, meaning that these ports are connected to end devices. So the end devices in your network are your access layer. Your layer two switches are your access layer. That's something to keep in mind. Your layer three switches are usually your distribution layer, and then your routers are normally your core layer because they do all the routing and connecting to the internet, connecting sites, distribution layers, connect VLANs, and all that good stuff. So now what we're gonna do is assign these ports to VLAN 99. So we're gonna switch port, access VLAN 99. And we're gonna shut. We just shut all these ports down because they're not in use. Nothing's plugged in. We're only gonna take out the ones that we need. Next thing we're gonna do 
Let's do the same thing for the gigabit interfaces. So interface range, gigabit 01 and 2. First thing, switch port. Even though it doesn't accept it, get used to just telling that interface to be a switch port whenever you're using a switch. So that way you'll remember. Switch port mode, access to tell it to be an access port. It can also be a trunk port, but we're not using trunks. Right now it's just an access port and whenever we need to change it, we'll change it. And then we'll go access uh, VLAN 99 and then we'll shut them down. And whenever we need them, we'll bring them back up. Okay, we'll exit that, we'll exit this. And now let's do a show VLAN brief. All right, and as you can see, everything's now assigned to VLAN 99. Next thing we need to do is start moving our port. So let's go into config T, and then let's go interface F01, switch port, access VLAN 10, and then no shut. And so I'm using this port, this number here, lets you know which VLAN the PC is assigned to. And now we need to go into interface FO2. We can do it right from here. And then we'll go switch port, access VLAN 20, and then no shut. Next thing we need to do is go into interface FO3 and assign that to VLAN 10, switch port, access VLAN 10, and then we do a no shut. And now we do the same thing for VLAN 30 or for um, interface 04. Switch port access to VLAN 30. Boom. Show VLAN brief. And if we look at this, stretch this out, you can see no ports are assigned to VLAN 1, two ports to VLAN 10. One port to VLAN 20 and one port to VLAN 30, and the rest are in the parking lot VLAN and they're down. So let's do a show IP interface brief. And then we'll pipe, exclude, let's say down. And you can see all the ports that are up right now. And the only ports that are up are the ones we brought up. And it looks like I forgot to bring up port four. So interface F04, and let's do a no shut. Now that's up. So we do a show VLAN brief, and you can see everything's assigned. Now if we do a show interface, or show IP interface brief, pipe exclude down, you can see all the ones that are up. Now, the, the, the good thing about piping um, is you can exclude what you don't need and it makes your uh, what you what you actually see easier and as you can see when I did it last time I noticed immediately that fast Ethernet 04 was not up so that's one thing get used to piping get used to excluding get used to include including and all that good stuff so we're there now we need to bring up one more interface and that would be gigabit 01 but we'll save that for the next video. Let's do show VLAN brief. And everything's assigned. So now, essentially, here, this PC could communicate with another PC that's in the same subnet. So if I go over here to this PC and I assign it to the same subnet, Let's do that real quick just so we can demonstrate. Let's go 192.168.10.11. Boom. And if we go in here and ping it, let's go ping 192.168.10.11. We get replies. We're good to go. And if we go over here to this, switch one and do a show MAC address table. You'll see we have two entries, which is 
ports um, fast ethernet on one and fast ethernet on three if we do a show vlan brief you can see what's in here fast ethernet on one and fast ethernet on three now if we go over here to i'm just demonstrating everything so you guys understand if we go over here to this desktop here and we're assigning it this is pc02 or pc2 168.20 and let's give it 20. that'll be the ip address of this one and if we try to ping 192.168.10.10 we can't ping because we don't have a default gateway configured that's the purpose of a default gateway it connects networks and allows devices to communicate okay now that we have everything configured the last thing we need to do is save the configurations so we're going to do copy the running configuration to the startup configuration enter enter good to go now that's that in the next video we'll go over trunks 802.1q specifically and then we'll set up sub interfaces and then we'll start testing out ssh and everything to make sure things communicate i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm going to do the same thing to switch to it's going to be fast forwarded feel free to watch if you got any questions hit the comment section below peace